Hello everyone, I'm John Higgins, contributing writer to Film and TV Now, and I'm delighted to welcome one and all to this special interview with writer-director Henry Scriven, who is the um, director of To a Cinder, which is getting its world premiere at the London Independent Film Festival 2023. And um, he's also a prolific uh, creative, and he's worked on brands like Ralph Lauren and, um, and Absolute Vodka. Now, as to a cinder is making its debut and it's been script not been screened anywhere else this is a spoiler free interview um we're not going to be talking revealing too much because a i have seen the film but i don't want to give too much away because it's a very interesting movie so henry a warm welcome to you thanks john thanks so much for having me on the show okay so as mentioned no spoilers but could you share with people out there what exactly how you what what do you feel this film is about yeah of course um so um to a cinder is uh i would describe it as a sort of a thriller drama um it is it's quite dark it's set in london it's about um it's about a character called paul who is sent to perform a simple task a, a stakeout um but as in uh, in the process of performing his task um what starts as a st stakeout turns to obsession and he starts to fall in love with the person that he's supposed to be watching um and after that everything goes a bit crazy okay so it reminds me a little bit on themes it reminds me a little bit of stakeout the john Badham movie and also sharky's machine with burt reynolds when he was watching rachel ward in that movie years ago so it's very much in that thing so what was the start off point for the script so to a cinder is a adaptation from a graphic novel um so the the, the graphic novel called, is called her and it's by david taylor who's a, a scottish comic book artist um it's uh, you know, it's not a hugely widely known piece of work. I, I found it online. It, it's self-published, but it's it was a. I found this this beautiful short story about um, you know, essentially that sort of same that same sort of kickoff uh, synopsis. A, a a man sent on a stakeout to watch a woman and falling in love with her. But it's a uh, the the graphic novel itself. You 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 have to um, if you get a chance, you do have to read it. it it's very short, but it's it's really beautifully. Um, visualized um, it's it's set in this kind of like slightly alternative noir world that kind of lends itself to those noir sort of American films of like the 50s and 60s or maybe in the UK in the 70s and 80s um, but it's 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 in a sort of more of a contemporary setting um, and uh, I just thought it was such a fantastic graphic novel um, it worked really well um, I thought it would work really well as a a full blown feature film. I I be quite in quite sort of a, a, a small number of locations, um, but it it just had a sort of a tone and a mystery and a sense of self about it that I wanted to try and capture on film. Okay, so obviously as this is an adaptation, I mean, what were the challenges in securing the rights? I mean, how did you get a go about that? Yeah, I mean that's that's a great question. Um, I found the graphic novel uh online well just you know I'm, I'm quite a graphic novel uh fan and I appreciate people who uh who create that kind of stuff and and, and self-publish as well so I found it online and pretty much as soon as I read it as I read it I think as I read it for the first time I could almost I was almost imagining all the other scenes I was I was seeing in my head how this could form into a film it felt like a film already in a lot of ways so it I just I, I just got straight in touch with the author of it, uh, David, um, at first just to talk to him and find out his inspiration. And we started a relationship over email and then through calls and Zooms and everything. Um, and over a few months, I sort of talked to him about, you know, what this could potentially be. And it wasn't it wasn't a sort of there weren't like lots of other people trying to um, trying to get the work, but I just wanted to make sure that our relationship was was um, was at such a strength that he would trust me to um, take what essentially is his own art and transfer that onto a screen. Um, and so we built a relationship over months um, and then, you know, he was quite happy for me to um, 
he understood what I wanted to do and he's quite happy for me to to take on that adaptation and create it uh, as a film and um uh he he has seen the finished film and he's he, he he's he's really really delighted with it he's uh he, he's very happy so um that's that's really pleasing to me as well okay so let's talk a bit about the cast and your um, um who did uh, was it a long process i mean what were your reasons for picking the actors that you had in the film yeah good question um so some of them hey most of them came through casting um so elliot warren is obviously the um the lead the lead role he plays pool um who's the lead character in the film um i had seen him in uh a short film that a friend of mine had made uh and i thought it just it was just in it for a f in barely 10 or 15 seconds and he but he really stood out to me um so we got him in uh and and he did he did a, he did a couple of auditions with us um and he was just great straight away, straight away. I could see him as the character. And it was weird because in my head, I think I pictured Paul a bit different. He doesn't look anything like um, the main character from the comic book. But as soon as he started speaking the lines, um, his sort of physicality uh, and his delivery were were really on point for the sort of the tone that we wanted to go to. Um, I was really impressed with his work. Um, he's got a great back back catalogue and he's in some really great stuff coming up. You know, he was in um, he had a small part in the the Batman film uh, and he's in this new Masters of Air, Masters of Air, Masters of Air film uh, series on Apple with uh, Spielberg's uh, uh, executive producing. Um, so he's like he's this young talent. He's he's up and coming. He's really great. And he really shines through in this movie. Um, uh, the other cast men members. There's uh, Rosalind, who plays Eleanor, again, came through casting. We were really lucky to get her. Um, she's really fantastic, delivers to a point in this movie. Um, and a lot of the, uh, you'll know, John, a lot of the sort of uh, beats and points of the movie kind of revolve around her and how she's feeling and who mm. she is. So um, that we needed someone great in that role. Um, and then Bill Ward as well, who um, you'll see kind of, is is throughout this whole movie but only really came in i think for for two days of shooting so we shot all of bill's parts in just two days um but he's such an absolute consummate professional he was the kind of guy who just walked onto set and everyone would every you could see you know every the gaffer the runner the dap as soon as he opened his mouth and started speaking um the way he just just owned every single frame that he he was in um just uh, sort of re really enlivened in everyone, and he came um, again through casting. But he was he was recommended to us from our from our casting direct director Alex Fidelsky. Um, so uh, yeah, lots of different people from lots of different places, and uh, it was great to work with all of them. Yeah, I mean, I have to say, not giving too much away, I think their performances are absolutely fantastic. I mean, Rosalind's, you know, as I say, but because the key thing is, is and people will understand it when they watch the movie, because again, it's a movie that sort of sets itself up in a specific way. But then for the movie to work overall, you know, you'll suddenly find that really you'll be backtracking to see what points work where. You know, so that's as far as it is. So let's talk a bit about your production team. I mean, tell us a bit more about your collaborators in that context. Yeah, of course. Um, firstly, um, you know, huge shout out to to Paula, our producer, who um, who I met um, just I was looking for a producer and and someone recommended to him for me for this um, for the for, uh, to collaborate on this film for. Um, uh, you know, she's been as of a real a real backbone of the project from beginning to end um uh david corley dop um just a fantastic cinematic artist i've been working with him for 13 or 14 years now on a whole variety of short films documentaries uh commercials all sorts of things and he's just he's brilliant and i'm i'm i'm, I'm grateful that he's still sort of picking up my phone and agreeing to work with me on, on my projects and not being snapped up by hollywood um and uh you, you know some fast fantastic other collaborators on this film across really across the board um shout out to the po post production team as well um Gareth uh and uh the editor Michael sound designer and Holly the uh the composer i think the sc the score 
Um, I don't know what your thoughts on the score are, John, but I, I really think that the music and the score in this film really helped bring it together, breathe life into it, um, uh, sort of hold that tension and keep everything kind of boiling under very steadily throughout the whole process. Yeah, of the film. I mean, it. I get it. I mean, the thing about it is, is like anything, the, when the score's perfect, I mean, if it's done in a certain way, you know, you 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 embrace the film in a big way. I mean, the texture of music against visuals is always keen. So um, you mentioned you shot in London. Um, how long was the shooting schedule? It was short. It was really short. You know, it was um, uh, it was two weeks and it was 12 shooting days over two weeks. Uh, so the whole film, film was shot in 12 days. Um, and it was shot uh, start of 2021 in sort of kind of like right in the, the height of COVID during a lockdown. Um, so there was a lot of that, um, there's a lot of that, uh, process in place, um, with, uh, testing, cast and crew, um, obviously, you know, masks and kind of those kind of plastic visors we were all sort of wearing at the time. And, you know, our, we, we had a real, um, sense of, um, we, we, we really wanted to make sure everyone was safe, um, both from a, uh, you know, a humanity point of view. We didn't want anyone getting ill. Um, but also from a production point of view, you know, we were were a small small film shooting over a few days, and we had one shot at it. And I think if if one of our lead actors or you know one of our main crew had got COVID, it would I it would be it would it would have been a real struggle to complete the film. Um, so we we, we it was paramount that everyone was uh, safe and secure. Um, but yeah, we shot the whole in twelve days across London. Well, it's um, you know, as I say, it's 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 very well shot and coordinated, and you plan and stuff like that. So, at at the start, um, we mentioned that you work with brands like Absolute Vodka and Harley Davidson, amongst others that you've done over the years. I mean, how does your filmmaking how how influential does the style of doing stuff like that impact on you doing something like To a Cinder? Yeah, yeah. So I sort of have, I guess, a, a dual career where I work uh, um, in advertising and then I also uh, write and shoot my own uh, films as well. Um, <clears throat> I think they kind of inform each other. Um, there are plenty of uh, overlaps between the sort of the, the world of cinema and the world of advertising, obviously, just from a practical perspective, being on sets and directing and thinking about cameras and framing and the latest tech and all that. That's obviously really important. Um Cinema, I think, has always informed advertising for, you know, you're telling different stories and that there, there, there is shorter spaces and now even shorter spaces and different aspect ratios, perhaps. But you're always being informed by the language of cinema. And I think you're always going after that same thing. You're always going after um, human emotions. You're always looking for empathy. You're always looking to capture, excite, engage an audience in different ways uh, and show them things that they've never seen before. And whether that's over 15 seconds on Instagram or 30 seconds on TV or 90 minutes in the cinema, it's kind of the same purpose and the same goal. Mm -hmm. So obviously following on from that, because what's interesting is this is advertising, the context of advertising. Now, of course, we know that very famous filmmakers like Ridley Scott, Adrian Lyne and the late Alan Parker did start in commercials and then became... You know, they made the transition very successfully to, into making films that were very commercial and critical successes. So what advice? I mean, obviously, this is part of the London Independent Film Festival and networking and stuff like that is important. So there's two questions. One of them is how important is networking to you? And also, what advice would you give to people working in other aspects of media who would love to make the transition to what you would like to do, what you've done with Tua Sinda? Yeah. Um, OK, so um, how important is networking to me? Um, I mean, networking's networking is hugely important. You know, we all live and breathe by our by our networks, I guess, or or you could even call them communities. Um, so I've been very lucky and been part of um, uh, talent uh, programs. I'm currently on BAFTA Connect as a talent program. And which and really great things about that is you get put in pools and on Zoom calls and WhatsApp groups and email chains with lots of other young or up and coming uh, filmmakers or DPs or sound engineers or lots of other people trying to do the same thing. And you're sort of feeding off each other, recommending things to each other, uh, helping each other out. 
um, going to, you know, a lot of these events and, and meeting people and sort of being inspired by the, each other. And I, I, you know, outside myself, I know loads of other sort of collaborations, whether that's producer, director, or, you know, editor, sound, or whatever that might be, have, have met at events, at networking places, at, at places like London Independent Film Festival, which is, you know, these these types of events are so important for artists to have like a forum to meet people in person to to get inspired um yeah so i, I would say it's hugely important to me um and to your second question uh i completely forgot what you said John. oh it's just basically i mean what would you, what advice would you give to people who want to sort of get involved who, who kind of are you know maybe people who've never done it or people are like say in music or in editing or you know acting for example because i know i i meet a lot of actors who make that who decide because they're frustrated at where they are with their careers they decide you know we're going to produce something so it's mm. what what advice would you give people yeah wait, okay great so when you're starting off kind of making little bits and pieces making short films um the main advice is to not overthink it just to go and do it i mean when i was starting off making short films i would be making and this was a bit younger when I had a lot more time on my hands, but you know, I'd be looking to make a short film every week and, and it didn't. And I would say like 90% of them were the worst thing you've ever seen, but that didn't matter. It was just in making it is your practice in making it. Like I did a year at film school, but I learned a lot more about making films by just making films with my friends, making films with collaborators, playing with cameras, like seeing a movie, looking at a scene trying to recreate it or trying to recreate a shot and working out how how everything works and how it comes together um and finding and again going back to your first point i guess is finding your community and people who want to do that at the same time and people who are really keen uh, and enthusiastic about doing it and want to come and help you and then just going out and doing it you know you, people say it a lot but now you can shoot things on your phone um i've taught a, a phone film art making class before to um to kids as a, as a part of a a, ch a charity co collaboration a few years ago with the princess trust and um you know you can go and shoot a short film in a week you can write a script in a couple of days and shoot a six, 60 second short film in a week and edit it on your phone you can be doing that every single week and every film will get slightly better than the next one and in a year's time you'll be much better than me and you'll be off okay so obviously um a few final questions before we wrap up. I and mean, first one is what issues and themes are you keen to explore in future work? What, what issues and themes? Yeah. What sort of things are, you know, because obviously you've explored a certain thing in this film, but are there mm. things, you know, is your next film going to be a different genre or a different thing? What, what would you like to do? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so the thing I'm developing at the moment, um, I would say maybe it's more, maybe it's more of a dark comedy. Um, it is, it's looking to explore maybe a slightly more uh, definitely a kind of like a cultural touch point um but using uh still in kind of like a thriller-esque world but using maybe more of a dark comic tone to to kind of address that um so yeah it's it, I, I, it's kind of in the same world um but maybe looking at life in in a slightly different lens okay and um, let's talk a little bit about the fact that you're the world premier of the films in the London Independent Film Festival. I mean, how important is getting a platform like a festival to help your film in its evolution? Because obviously one of the big challenges is, you know, you get your festival screening, but then of course it's still out there vulnerable trying to get into streaming platforms, release dates. I mean, sometimes films take maybe a year after their initial festival screening before they get a release because of that. So how, how important is a festival like London independent to you? Yeah, it's usually, I mean, first of all, we're delighted to be at the London independent film festival. Um, we, uh, I live in London, the film set in London, the film shot in London, a lot of the cast and the crew are from London and it's, it's a massive hub of films of filmmaking. So to uh to be able to screen my work here at the london independent film festival is huge for me um uh, and for us um and um yeah obviously it's, it's the world premiere it's the first time it's been screened and like you said it does take sometimes a long time for it to go move from that to um you know getting on a, a, a platform online um, but yeah, it, it's just important because it, it's, it's the kickoff. It's the first time people see it. Um, it's the first time a lot of 
sales agents will hear about it. It's the first time you get to see it in front of an audience. And it's almost that reaction from the audience, the reviews, um, the journalists that will kick off a um, a run and a campaign and uh, uh, sort of uh, hopefully a, a series of other screenings um, and the end of which will be a, hopefully a, a, a bit of a wider release for people um, who, see it, who can see it digitally and online. Um, so it, it is, is hugely important for us and, and we're, we're really delighted to be here. Okay, and so finally, my last question before we leave is, what are you most proud of about the film? <clears throat> um, yeah, it's a good question. Um, I think, I'm just really proud of the fact that we managed to gather together a bunch of great filmmakers and artists and actors uh, and to pull off something which was quite difficult at a time where people were scared to go outside uh, in less than two weeks. And really from reading the comic book in 2020 to shooting it, uh, to writing it and, sh and then shooting it in 2021, um, to getting our first screening now in 2023. Um, I, I think it's just a, a massive effort from a bunch of very talented people. And I'm I'm just really happy to have, uh, to have worked with them all. Okay. Well, listen, Henry, thank you so much for your time and insights today. Um, just wrapping up, as mentioned to us in the place as part of the London Independent Film Festival, which takes place at the Genesis Cinema Mile in London between the 14th and 23rd of April. Um, there are eight films in total um, and there's a lot of networking events. So do check out um, the event if you can. If you want to know where ticket you can get tickets, go to the web Genesis website, www.genesiscinema.co.uk. If you want to know more about the festival itself, which actually is this year celebrating its 20th anniversary, you can go to www.liff.org. And if you want to see more interviews, articles and reviews, you can look at the Film and TV Now website, which is filmandtvnow.com. And you can watch a replay of this interview on my YouTube channel, John Higgins Film Review. So again, thank you, Henry. And thanks for watching. Thanks, John. Take care.